Hi everyone, thanks for watching. Today's video is part two of a three part series about the Mark of the Beast. In this video, we will look at Revelation 13 18 and specifically how the number 666 relates to Trump. To recap part one, I talked about how Revelation 13 17 tells us that there are three variations to the Mark of the Beast the Mark itself, the name of the Beast, the number of the name. And I talked about how Trump, with his recent embracing of the number 45, is now fulfilling all three of these variations and how he marks his property all around the world. The letter T as a simple mark, his own last name or signature, the number of his name, which is 45. In case you're not too convinced that 45 is the number of Trump's name, I encourage you to rewatch part one. Trump is essentially telling us that 45 is the number of his name, and we should listen to him. I'm convinced that the number of his name in verse 17 and the number of the beast in verse 18 are two different yet complementary numbers. One is a specific number, the number 45, which is one of the three variations of the mark of the beast. The other number, 666, means something much, much deeper. So let's look at Revelation 13, 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man and his number is 600, three score, and 6. At first glance, verse 18 seems to be a bit odd. Why tell us that those with understanding should count the number of the beast, but then tell us that the number is 666? If the answer requires wisdom and understanding, why tell us what the answer is? We first need to understand the intended meaning behind the word count. According to Strong's Concordance, this word has a few different connotations, from counting with pebbles, to compute, to calculate, and to reckon. There's even a reference to voting by casting a pebble into an urn. In fact, there are those on YouTube who state that verse 18 is all about voting, and that people who vote for the Antichrist will go to eternal damnation. However, we must look at the entire context of the passage in order to understand if this is true. The verse is actually telling us what we should do. Let him, who has understanding, count the number of the beast. If count means voting, then the verse is stating, let those with understanding vote the number of the beast. This is completely nonsensical, of course. The Bible is not telling us to vote for the beast. Instead, by examining the entire verse, the word count clearly means to reckon the number 666. But more than that, it's telling us that the number is calculated to be 666. There's nothing further for us to calculate. The number is 666, and we are to reckon or consider the number because it's of special importance. Why is this number so important? Because because this number is a signpost directing us towards another figure in the Bible, one that will give us a deeper understanding of the purpose of the Antichrist. Who is that other biblical figure? If we look at verse 18 a bit closer, there are three clues as to the identity of that person. Clue number one, here is wisdom. There is one figure in the Bible who had such great wisdom, he is considered to be the wisest man who ever lived. Clue number two, let him that hath understanding. The very same man with great wisdom that I just mentioned also specifically asked God for understanding. Clue number three, 600, three score, and six. This same man, the one with great wisdom and understanding in the first two clues, also has a specific connection to the number 666. All three of these clues, wisdom, understanding, and 666, are pointing us to the same biblical figure, and that figure is King Solomon. As we know, King Solomon was an incredibly wealthy and wise ruler of Israel who succeeded his father, King David. Solomon is credited with building the first temple in Jerusalem, which, of course, was named Solomon's Temple. While Solomon had great wisdom, power, and wealth, he became extremely foolish, perhaps more foolish than any man has ever been. God gave special instructions to those who would be king of Israel, and the instructions are referred to as the three laws of kingship given in Deuteronomy 17, verses 16 and 17. 
He shall not multiply horses to himself, neither shall he multiply wives to himself, that his heart turn not away, neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. Despite the astoundingly great wisdom and understanding Solomon possessed, he violated each of God's instructions on how a king of Israel should behave. Solomon desired a great number of chariots and horsemen, at one point having 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horsemen. Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines. Solomon pursued greater wealth than he already had, specifically gold. Foreign wives turned his heart away from the Lord and toward the pagan gods that his wives worshipped. For it came to pass, when Solomon was old, that his wives turned his heart away after other gods. And the Bible names the various pagan gods that Solomon worshipped with his wives. In fact, this wasn't just limited to a few of his wives. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. If there's one thing Solomon loved more, than foreign women, it was gold. Solomon loved gold so much that he had hundreds of shields made out of hammered gold. And to directly connect the number 666 in Revelation to King Solomon, we have this verse. The weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was 603 score and six talents of gold. We now see that Solomon's gold was calculated to weigh 666 talents. The 18th verse is about King Solomon becoming a type of Antichrist. Here is wisdom. Solomon was the wisest man in the world. Let him that hath understanding. Solomon specifically prayed to God for understanding. Count the number of the beast. We are to reckon or consider this number, for it is the number of a man. The number points to one specific man, and his number is 600, three score, and six. The 666 talents of gold that Solomon received are a symbolic turning point for when this man of God became a type of Antichrist. But there's something even deeper to all of this. Revelation 13:18 is specifically pointing us to Solomon's gold, and there's a reason for doing so. All of these pagan gods that Solomon worshipped are themselves variations of, and subservient to, the one pagan god that nearly every culture in history has placed above the others, the sun god. And the sun god is identified with one specific thing, gold. Thus we have the number 666 in Revelation pointing us to gold, and gold itself is a representation of the sun god. Solar deities and sun worship can be found throughout most of recorded history in various forms. The sun was often viewed as the giver of life itself. And even within pagan religions where many gods were worshipped, the sun god was given a high status. The sun god is historically identified with gold, just like the sunshine is golden, and gold is the most valuable metal. To many civilizations that worship the sun, it makes sense that gold was seen as a valuable representation of the sun given its shiny yellow attributes. In culture after culture, we see the sun god is either the most important god or a major part of a large group of pagan deities. For example, the 36 deacons of the zodiac are comprised of various demons, angels, and gods from a variety of pantheons. And yet the one thing that these pantheons all share is a sun god. The 36 deacons of the zodiac are interesting for yet another reason. The sum of the integers from 1 to 36 equals 666. Thus we have the 36 pagan deities of the zodiac representing or totaling a number that it itself points to gold, which in turn is equated with the sun god. Revelation 13, 18 is giving us insight into the true nature of the Antichrist by pointing us to King Solomon, and specifically the 666 talents of gold. The Bible is telling us that the final Antichrist will be obsessed with gold and with the ultimate pagan deity, the sun god. In fact, the Antichrist will see himself as the personification of the sun god. Just as happened with the golden calf of Aaron and the golden statue of King Nebuchadnezzar, the final Antichrist will also use gold to symbolize his own power and to honor the god of forces, the sun god. The Antichrist will soon proclaim himself to be either God or a God, and will also have an image that people must worship. We should expect this image to be either made of gold or involve gold on some level. It will be the ultimate golden idol intended to honor the Antichrist as the sun god. Everything about Trump revolves around gold. 
from how focused the decor is on gold and its properties, to calling for the United States to return to the gold standard, to imagining himself as the modern-day Midas with everything he touches turning to gold. There are those who poke fun at Trump's hair and facial color and who mock him as looking orange. But what Trump's going for is the golden look to his hair and skin. It's all about gold, even down to what he wants to see when he looks into the mirror. And make no mistake about it, Trump knows full well that gold is identified with the sun god. Trump already honors the sun god in his penthouse in Trump Tower, most noticeably with the large mural of Apollo on a ceiling. Trump sees himself as a type of Apollo, a magnificent and powerful god of forces who is able to achieve all that he wants. In his own eyes, Trump is the ultimate deity, the modern day sun god, surrounding himself with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Revelation 13, 18 is telling us that the Antichrist will be a man obsessed with gold and the sun god. Everything about this man will revolve around the love and appearance of gold. Simply put, gold will be part and parcel of what the Antichrist is. Let no one deceive you by any means. Donald J. Trump is the Antichrist, and the day is coming soon when he will claim to be godlike. And when he does that, there will be one specific god that Trump will have in mind, the sun god. That's all for today. I'll be back next week with part three of this series. Thank you for taking the time to watch, and if you care to leave a comment, please do. As always, please be respectful in any comment you leave. I'll talk to you guys soon.